Hi, I'm Brian Orr, and I'm one of the founders of Kalos Services. If you live in the Central Florida area, you've probably seen our trucks around. A lot of them are silver, some of them are burgundy, uh, but we travel all around the Central Florida area fixing your air conditioners. In addition to being a founder and owner of Kalo Services, I also started an online community called HVAC School, and I help to train technicians all around the world in air conditioning best practices. Now one thing that we've been seeing a lot is companies who are telling customers that recharging with certain types of refrigerant, uh, one type being known as R22, a lot of people will call it Freon, they're telling customers that it's illegal to do this. Some of them will say things like recharging the system will result in them losing their license or that they'll turn somebody into the EPA if the system is recharged. I think in a lot of cases it's just as simple as the technician themselves not being properly educated on what the EPA says about these things. Refrigerant R22 is one of many refrigerants that are recognized as being an ozone depleting substance by the EPA. And it also has a global warming potential or GWP. Refrigerant R22, often known as Freon, has been in use for many, many years in residential air conditioning. There's nothing wrong with it as a refrigerant, but the EPA and many other international government bodies have come to recognize that it does cause global warming. Because of this, they regulate its release. There are some laws on the books about very large systems and the recharging of those systems. They still can be recharged, but you have to prove that your repair leaks. As you can see on this chart, there are regulations from the EPA on HCFC and CFC refrigerants, like R22, for example, that we're talking about here, when the systems contain more than 50 pounds of refrigerant. And the rules slightly change depending on whether or not it's comfort cooling, industrial process, or commercial refrigeration. Even in those cases, it is allowable to recharge with R22 within certain parameters. In residential, it is legal to charge with R22 under all circumstances, though certainly not always recommended. On residential systems under 50 pounds of refrigerant, which in your house, all of the systems are going to be under 50 pounds, there's no law prohibiting the recharging of these systems. Now, there are good reasons not to recharge, good financial reasons and good common sense reasons, but there are also some times when recharging makes sense. So we're here in our storage room inside our offices, and this is refrigerant R22 that was purchased recently. This is a newer refrigerant called R410A. R410A and R22 make up the majority of all residential and commercial refrigerants. R410A is not an ozone depleting substance, but it does have a global warming potential. Therefore, both R22 and R410A have to be controlled and prevented from release into the environment. This is why we use devices known as recovery machines and recovery tanks for the re safe removal and storage of refrigerant. In our shop, we keep refrigerant tanks that have been tagged for the recovery of R410A and the recovery of R22. Both of these have to be recovered. Here we have some empty tanks that are ready to put back into service. Refrigerant R22 is what's known as an HCFC by the EPA. It contains the substances hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, and carbon. And it's the chlorine that's considered to be the ozone depleting substance. Refrigerant R410A here, it's made up of hydrogen, fluorine, and carbon. Therefore, it's known as an HFC. It still has a global warming potential, but it does not deplete the ozone. In summary, if an air conditioning contractor or air conditioning service technician tells you that R22 cannot legally be recharged on a small residential system, typical system in a home, anything from one and a half to five tons, they're incorrect. You can recharge a system with R22, though it's much more advisable to find the leak and make an appropriate repair and then replace the system when it comes time to do so. It's not illegal to recharge with R22. Even in the new version of the 2018 EPA regulations, there's nothing in that code that disallows you from recharging that system. I confirmed this recently in a conversation that I had for the HVAC School podcast with a representative of the EPA, as well as just through reading the code and the changes to the code. R22 is scheduled to be phased out for new production in 2020, which means that after 2020, R22 is no longer going to be available except from the reclaimed stock. The good news is, is that as we continue to reclaim old R22, R22 will continue to be available for years. But as we move forward, you're going to want to consider R410A or other refrigerant options. So the question that many have, and I'm sure will continue to ask me, is do I advocate for the recharging of R22 on systems that have known leaks? And the answer is, it really depends. In certain circumstances, it's totally foolish to recharge with R22, both from an economic and environmental standpoint. That does not mean that the EPA prohibits it, because the EPA does not prohibit it. 
based on the 608 code. Some AC contractors are telling customers that they can top off a system with something other than R22. So let's say you have a leak and you only have a partial charge left of R22, and they'll tell you that you can put another refrigerant in on top of that in order to charge it up. This is incorrect and is against EPA regulations. The EPA does not allow for any field mixing of refrigerants under any circumstances. In circumstances where a system is being tested, and it's found to be very slightly low, so a pound of refrigerant or under in most cases. In these cases, it makes sense to recharge the piece of equipment, even if you are going to do a leak detection, so that way you can get the system working at maximum efficiency. For those of you who are concerned about the environment, there are several factors here. Not only are we concerned about the release of refrigerant into the environment, but we're also concerned about energy usage. So when you have a system that's running inefficiently because it doesn't have the proper refrigerant charge, that's also a factor. So there are certain circumstances in which recharging with R22 is actually a good idea or it's necessary in order to get a system working temporarily. In general, it's best to find the leak, make a repair, or replace the piece of equipment. What makes me very uncomfortable is HVAC technicians who use a government agency like the EPA in order to threaten customers into making repairs that the customer may not be prepared to make. That's something that I would encourage all AC contractors to rethink, know the code, Read the, read the rules and know them and don't use them as a hammer to try to get customers to make decisions that they're not ready to make. I'm Brian Orr, one of the co-owners of Kalo Services. Have a great day.